Welcome to chapter number 2 Types of Stock Markets Normally there are two types of stock markets One is primary market and the other is secondary market Primary market is the market in which the company is listed for the first time And once it is listed it gets traded on the secondary market So let us talk about primary market first now primary market is a market wherein corporates issue new securities in order to raise funds. The company which issues its shares is called issuer and the process of issuing share to public is known as public issue or initial public offer. So if for example I am a company and I want my company to raise money because I want to expand my business. So what I will do I will go to people I will go to public and that is called public issue which is through initial public offer now this entire process involves various intermediaries such as merchant banker banker to issue underwriters and registrars all these intermediaries are registered with SEBI so what are these steps to be followed by companies who want to go for an IPO the company appoints a merchant banker for the IPO process the merchant banker assists the company in IPO process so if I am a company and I want to go to the public that is I want to uh, raise money from the market I will appoint a merchant banker now the company has to apply to SEBI with a registration statement this statement has details about the business of the company reasons for coming out with an IPO and the financial details of the company so you have to justify the reason why you want to come out in the market why you want to raise the money what is your standard you have to talk about your credibility in the market why should people invest in your company so once SEBI receives the registration statement it decides whether the company should be allowed to go for an IPO or not after the company gets initial approval from SEBI, it needs to prepare the draft red herring prospectus. This prospectus is a document which consists of information about the business of the company and the industry that it operates in. So once SEBI is convinced that the IPO should be released, the company needs to prepare draft red herring prospectus. So it's the type of document which contains all the information about the company. Now this document gets circulated to the public. It includes details such as estimated size of the IPO, estimated number of shares being offered to the public, how does the company plan to utilize the funds, financial statements of the company, the promoter details and etc. Now the company has to advertise about the IPO through television, print advertisement in order to build awareness about the company and its IPO offering. This process is called IPO Roadshow. So after the draft red herring prospectus, there will be IPO Roadshow. Now the company or the issuer of the IPO has to decide the price band between which the company would like to go public. So every company has to decide the value, the market price of one share. For example, the company has decided a price band of 200 to 205. So one share of the company will be listed in the market through an IPO for 200 rupees to maximum 205. So uh, if an investor wishes to invest in the IPO, he can choose to buy shares at a price anywhere between 200 and 205. Now after the price band is fixed, the company has to officially open the window so that the public can subscribe for the shares. The subscriber can bid for an IPO with the price band decided by the company. This is also called book building. So once the price band is fixed, the company has to open the window so that public can subscribe the shares. The subscribers can bid for an IPO within the price band decided by the company and this is called book building. So after the subscribing window is closed which is generally open for 2 to 3 days, the price point at which the issue gets listed is decided. The shares are then listed on the respective stock exchange. 
So what is the procedure to apply for an IPO? As I've already talked about, you need to have a DMAT account to apply for an IPO. You also need to apply for ASB application supported by blocked amount through the bank to which you have linked your trading and DMAT account. So every DMAT account will be linked to a bank account and the bank account will have this feature which is called application supported by blocked amount through which you can go to your online banking account and you can subscribe for an IPO through ASBA. So the amount you which you want to purchase that will be blocked through your bank and this the number of shares for which you have purchased will be transferred in electronic format in your DMAT account. So one can apply for IPO offline as well as online. In offline mode, the subscriber needs to collect the IPO form from the stock broker and submit the duly filled form. The broker will then submit the form to your bank to which you have linked the trading account. In online mode, one can directly log into the net banking services of the bank to which you have linked your trading account and apply for the IPO. Now let's talk about the secondary market. Now this is important. So what has happened in primary market? Your IPO. The company for the first time has come in the market. So it has to go to primary. Primary means first. So this is very simple. So whenever you talk about uh, market, share market, there are two types of market. Primary market is when you come first, you know, your first day in school, your first day in college. And after you graduate, you go to the next level. Similarly, once the share wants to come in the market, it has to get listed in the primary market. And once it has been listed in the primary market, now it will come to secondary market. Now secondary market is where the security issued in primary markets are bought and sold in the stock exchange. For example, in an IPO you have purchased 20 shares of one company. Now the IPO is listed. That means it is out. Now the price of those 20 shares have increased by 10% or have decreased by 10%. Whatever is the decision of the company based on that you can buy and sell the same shares in the secondary market so primary market is now closed the IPO is listed the job is done now if you want to sell the same 20 shares which you have purchased in the primary market you need to come to secondary market so primary market job is done now the job of secondary market starts this is the place where all the shares which you have purchased through IPO you can sell it through stock exchange or you can buy it and what are the two stock exchanges Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange and others as well now BAC and NSC are the most widely exchanges in India with the market capitalization of lakhs of crores so what are the lessons which you have learned from this video now primary market is a market where corporate issues new securities in order to raise funds so this is very clear there are two types of markets primary and secondary if for the first time you are coming in the market you have to first raise money through IPO in the primary market the secondary market is where the security and shares issued in the primary market are bought and sold on the stock exchange. The third is the company which issues its shares is called issuer and the process of issuing shares to the public is known as public issue or initial public offer. Any individual who subscribes for an IPO needs to have a compulsory DMAT account. He also needs to apply for an ASBA. Thank you.